Does Jesus matter to sexual morality and marriage? Part 2. After Christ. The Jews and then Christians had a radically different view of marriage and sex. One of the commandments God had given to Moses stated this, You shall not commit adultery. They also took seriously the words in Scripture which said, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Therefore, they saw sex outside of marriage as contrary to God's law, sinful and wrong. To the Christian, sex between a husband and wife was an expression of mutual love, trust, and respect. It was not to be self-serving or for lustful gratification. The concept of two becoming one required that a married couple be totally faithful to one another. By rejecting adultery and fornication, they instituted a new sexual morality to that of Greek and Roman society. Christians further believed that the sexual act was not to be performed openly or graphically on household items as was common in that day. They saw sex as a gift from God to the couple and therefore sacred. There was a short time when the Christians did do as the Romans did. They defined adultery on the basis of the woman's marital status and not the man's. This meant a man would not be guilty of adultery for having sex with a married woman, but a married woman would be. But Jesus didn't set one standard for men and another for women. He said, I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. It wasn't until 449 AD that the church declared that the sin of adultery applied to the man as well as the woman. This enabled the woman to divorce her adulterous husband. It was something that had never been seen before in Western society. The wedding ceremony itself was something that Christians brought dignity and beauty to. They saw marriage as a divine institution established by God when he brought Adam and Eve together. Therefore, the wedding day was a sacred day to speak vows before God that were witnessed by family and friends. They held their ceremony in the church, and it was performed by the pastor or priest as God's representative. It was a holy, solemn day, filled with excitement and joy. It was the complete opposite to the Roman wedding ritual, described as a facetious mockery. Today, the belief that marriage is a divine institution is still widely held in Western society. We can credit the dignity and sanctity of marriage especially to the early Christian women. Even more than the men, they appreciated the dignity and worth that Jesus had for them. These women saw themselves as God's redeemed children and took seriously their role as bearers of his children. The pagan author Libanius testified to this when he wrote, What women these Christians have! He was lauding their commitment as wives and mothers.